We're here today with former state representative Sid Miller, now running for Texas Agriculture Commission. Te Sid, welcome to Texas GOP Vote. Well, thank you, Bob. Good and, to be with you today. And welcome to the crowded race for the <laughs> Texas Ag Commission. It is crowded. <laughs> You know, that's a, it's a big responsibility coming in to take uh, Todd, Todd Staples place. He's done a great job with the, with yes. the office. And, uh, you know, I'd like to hear a little bit about your thoughts and your qualifications on, on this race. Sure, sure. Uh, this is a very important race, five people in it. Uh, I think I'm obviously the most qualified from the agricultural end of it. I think I'm the most qualified from the conservative end of it because we're running, obviously, the Republican primary. Uh, eight generations of my family have been farmers and ranchers here in the United States. Four generations here in Texas. We immigrated from Ireland, started farming in South Carolina, then Mississippi, and uh, in the late 1800s moved to Texas. Mm -hmm. So my family's always made the, are living off the land. I make my living off the land. I currently grow crops, cattle, horses, and uh, nursery stock, trees. Mm -hmm. They're in Stephenville, Texas. So I've uh, been doing that all my life. Uh, Graduated from uh, Tarleton State University, it's an agriculture college there in Stephenville, Texas, uh, with a degree in vocational agriculture. Uh, I was an ag teacher for five years, FFA advisor, 4-H leader, uh, continuing to, to my agricultural operation, had, had cattle and hogs and sheep and goats at that time. Uh, farm peanuts, I, I used to tell people I was a peanut farmer, now I tell them I'm a recovering peanut farmer. I've been, <laughs> I've been peanut free for about 10 years since I've had a crop of peanuts. There you go. But uh, served on the Farm Bureau Board there as a director. Was president of the Dublin uh, Peanut Farmers Cooperative. Uh, served on the local school board. So uh, served in the legislature for 12 years. Mm -hmm. uh, first chair uh, was vice chair of the Agriculture and Livestock Committee, and then chairman of the Agriculture and Livestock Committee, which has direct oversight of the Texas Department of Agriculture. So I'm the only candidate in the race. Uh, that has that in-depth knowledge of, of the depart inner workings of that department. Later on, I chaired the uh, uh, Committee on Homeland Security and Public Safety, which has jurisdiction over the Texas Rangers, securing the Texas border. Worked closely with Colonel McCraw over there. Mm -hmm. uh, we made great headway on the Texas border. Uh, we stopped uh, illegal drugs coming into Texas, went down uh, 60 percent, illegal immigration down 40 percent. So that was uh, one of the prouder moments of my uh, political career, along with passing the sonogram bill, which uh, saved 8,000 babies last year. My goodness, congratulations Thank on you. that. That was Thank an incredible you. bill for us. Uh, one of the big issues I think that's facing not only agriculture, but the urban areas as well, with a thousand people a day moving into the state of Texas, thanks to our great economy here, is water. Oh yes. And yes. Uh, tell us about that <clears throat> from the agriculture perspective and, and what we can do here in Texas. Well, one of the things, my objective is agriculture commissioner. I will make water the top priority for the Texas Department of Agriculture. Uh, we, we need to have a balance between industrial use, municipal use, and agriculture use. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a 50-year water plan. Uh, we have 11 reservoirs planned on that. We're not going to get there tomorrow, so we've got to do some things immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do, since I'm a conservative, I think we should conserve our water, do conservation efforts. We can mm -hmm. do that in the agriculture sector simply by uh, upgrading uh, equipment, more efficient equipment that has less wind drift, evaporation, runoff, uh, more efficient uh, pumps and, and pipe, uh, less friction. Uh, some of our cities are our worst uh, cases when it comes to uh, water loss. Uh, this report came out in some of our larger cities of the, in Texas, mm -hmm. from the time they get their water until they deliver it to the customer, they lose 30% of it. So we've got to look at that infrastructure. We can do that real quick, mm -hmm. real cheap. And that should be our first measure. We're also going to have to do some other things besides build reservoirs and, and do conservation efforts. We need to look at desalinization plants. Mm -hmm. El Paso, that area out there is already using some. We have a lot of water that's unusable in Texas. It's called brackish water, especially mm -hmm. in West Texas. But we can take the, the salt and minerals out of that and use that water. We could also use that water for fracking and oil field services instead of fresh water. Mm -hmm. So we've got to do some smarter things. Uh, they, they don't cost a lot of money. Uh, so that will be my number one focus as a Texas Department of Agriculture would be the water issue here in our state. Now speaking of water and money, um, the Texas just passed a constitutional amendment allowing money for the Rainy Day Fund. Other money has been appropriated. Is there like six to eight billion dollars now that's going to be spent on water infrastructure as we move forward. What role should the Texas Agriculture Commissioner and the commission play in that, yeah. in monitoring that money? The last constitutional election, the, the voters approved taking $2 billion out of the Rainy Day Fund 
earmarked uh, for water projects. Mm -hmm. The prior constitutional election, the voters approved six billion dollars in bonds. Mm -hmm. So it's a total of eight eight billion dollars. We have three commissioners that are overseeing that. So as ag coach commissioner, I think we should have a form of checks and balances. Those guys are our good guys, but there's no guarantee five years, 10 years, 15 years from now that those three guys are gonna be our guys. Mm -hmm. So we need a system of checks and balances. As ag coach commissioner, I, I intend to watch those funds, make sure they're used properly and just, and they're not, we're not wasting taxpayer dollars. Okay. One of the other issues that faces uh, at the agriculture industry in particular, when you look at farming and uh, the cattle and sure. a lot of different industries where they need manual labor, is they have a real shortage of labor in these areas. Uh, one issue that has been put forward as a solution to this is a guest worker program. Um, tell us about what your thoughts are on that and how that needs to move forward here in Texas. You know, we just need to have the courage. We, we, we need to address this. I mean, it, it, it's past time. First thing we need to do is secure the border. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, you can go back as far as Reagan and what he did, but. It, it didn't work because of one reason, we didn't secure the border. So we have to secure the border. Mm -hmm. Then we can set up a guest worker program. We don't even need to use taxpayer dollars to fund it. We would simply charge a fee for someone that wants to come to Texas and work. Mm -hmm. This not a legal citizen, to give them a guest worker program, sign them up. Uh, they have a certain window of time to stay here and work. Uh, most of the work that they come up here for is seasonal. You know, they're migrant workers, they go from you know, crop to crop to crop, and mm -hmm. at least in the agriculture sector. Uh, we use that money uh, to fund the program. We don't, taxpayers aren't saddled with that. They get up here and they pay their taxes. Mm -hmm. They pay withholding, they pay income tax, they pay social security, all of that. Mm -hmm. So they're not a burden on the system. They're just not done under the table. They'll be glad to do that because now, Bob, they're paying a coyote two or three thousand dollars to get them across the border and they're having to carry a backpack full of dope. Mm -hmm. Uh, since 2006, there's been 50,000 murders on the Texas-Mexican border. Yeah. That needs to stop. Absolutely. And we can do that with a uh, guest worker program that would be workable. Seal the border, document them, they pay the cost. Mm -hmm. We get, and that way they're on a level playing field with every other worker in the state too. Yeah, currently a lot of businesses, um, not a lot, but there are businesses out there that cheat the system. They'll hire illegal workers or right. they'll misclassify workers as independent contractors when they're really employees. Right. And when they don't do that, they gain an unfair business competitive advantage, but sure. the taxpayers get cheated also because they're not getting the unemployment taxes and workman's compensation coverage, which means right. one of those guys gets hurt, they get dumped at the county hospital and the taxpayers, taxpayers pick that up. So yeah. something that I've worked very closely with Colonel McCraw over the, with the Texas Rangers, mm -hmm. uh, I've been up and down that border. I've seen I've seen the problems. I've, I've seen those ranches that are devastated down there. Uh, a lot of those people couldn't sell the ranch if they wanted to. No one would buy it because mm -hmm. of all the uh, cartel activity down there and the illegal uh, actions that go on. So uh, I'm willing to take that on. Mm -hmm. I already have that working relationship with the border sheriffs down there. I've already built that coalition. So uh, I think it's high time the state of Texas addressed it. Good. What other issues are important to agriculture? Well, if you just separate ag culture away from the urban areas, mm -hmm. one of the things in, in, in rural Texas that has become a real problem is causing $500 million of damage each year is feral hogs, wild hogs. Wow. Uh, you know, not only do they tear up crops and, and, and destroy property, but they, they are a vector for all sorts of uh, types of disease like foot and mouth disease, cholera, rabies, mm. pseudo rabies, all of those. So. Mm. Uh, it's uh, even starting to creep into our urban suburban areas. They're mm -hmm. tearing up city parks, golf courses, turning over headstones. The uh, city of Irving, uh, close to where the Cowboys work out, trapped 300 head uh, there on the Trinity River. Uh, so it's something we need to address. Uh, in the legislature, I did pass a bill that is, that is helping. It's, it's not going to be an end all, but uh, uh, I took a, a liability that the farm and rancher had. They would have to hire a helicopter service. Mm -hmm come in with a gunner to, uh, and, and take out these, these wild hogs, uh, depredation, uh, take them out. And they had to pay for that, so very costly. So the bill I had allowed them to sell that seat on the helicopter to, to a hunter, somebody that wanted to go up and shoot hogs. Mm -hmm. And it's worked real well, so we've taken a, 
a liability for the farmer and rancher, turned it into an asset. We had 130 people sign up for operators, so we have 130 new businesses in Texas with five to ten employees each, so we're creating jobs. Uh, it's creating an income for the farmer and rancher, being able to sell those hunts out of the helicopters. So it's been a win-win. We're getting rid of the hogs. The took a liability, turned it into an asset. We had job creation. So it's, it's so far it's worked real well. Who says we're not entrepreneurial here? That's right. You know? <laughs> and uh, actually that for that reason, uh, 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 Ted Nugent uh, uh -huh. became my, agreed to be my campaign treasurer and, and state co-chairman co with David Riddle in, in Houston. So well, he was a big supporter of that bill. Well, that should make things rock and roll. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's a wild guy, and uh, yeah. but a solid conservative. He is. He is a great champion of the Second Amendment. Yep. As he says, we're American blood brothers when it comes to championing the Second Amendment. But we've got other good endorsements, too. Mm -hmm. uh, most all of the conservative groups that have endorsed have endorsed our campaign. Texas Right to Life, Young Conservatives, conservatives of Texas, Empower Texas, uh, conservative Republicans of Texas, and the list goes on and on. But uh, we've had real good luck with the grassroots are behind us. Uh, our campaign's going good. We're the we're the front runner because I, I can tell because they've been taking some shots at me. They <laughs> 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 don't do that unless they're scared. Right. You know? So yep. uh, I feel good. Well, you know, it's been a nice run up to this point, getting to the campaign, but now we're in a, in a thousand yard sprint, basically, yes, to sir. the March fourth primary. Um, ballot by mail applications go, are going out in less than two weeks, and um, and the uh, early voting starts in mid-February for a March 4th primary, so it's coming quick. It is. You know, we, we're burning up lots of miles up and down the road. Uh, started in Austin, Texas this morning, ended up uh, Cypress here at lunch, and we're going to another another venue back uh, west uh, this evening. So uh, it is uh, uh, it is a sprint from here on out. Well, Sid, thank you for being willing to serve the people of Texas again, and uh, we'd like to talk with you as uh, the race goes on a little bit further to delve into some other issues as it needs to come up. Thank you. Appreciate what you do. God bless. Right. Thanks. Thank you.